Athena, we know the best way to design a gasoline is from the inside out. So our Genesis Premium Gasoline was made to keep your intake valves clean, giving you more performance and better gas mileage. Because how a gasoline performs inside your car has a lot to do with how you perform on the outside. Genesis Gasolines. From your friends at FINA, the formula for the future. with me 17 years ago. It was so important for me to win, do the best, and prove I could play. Hi, I'm John Smoltz with the Atlanta Braves. Baseball has been a part of my life since I was seven years old. I made a decision that I wanted to be a Major League Baseball player, and I worked hard to reach my dream. You too can reach your goals, and I'd like to help you. I was no different than any kid who loved baseball. I used to spend hours and days throwing a ball against the wall of my house and watching every game I possibly could. My desire to grow up and be in the major leagues was helped by the support of my family. I want to tell you what it took for me to get here and understand what it takes to reach your goals, including the hard work, dedication, and determination that you need to obtain these dreams. There are hurdles along the way, and we'll discuss those. There are many sources of strength and support, and I will share these with you and help you to set goals and show you how to reach them. I have a friend who's going to help explain some of these things, Dr. Jack Llewellyn. Jack is a sports psychology consultant who in 1991 helped me turn around a 2-11 first half. I was having trouble concentrating, focusing on things that are important to me. Jack and I are going to help talk to you about how to overcome hurdles, how to achieve and set goals, and the importance of family support. So why don't you join us for the next 30 minutes? John learned how to use frustration as a motivator. He also learned how to use his emotions to make himself better physically. During the second half of the 1991 baseball season, John won 12 and lost two, a complete reversal of the first half, the biggest pitching turnaround since 1918. Every ball player, no matter what age, will experience frustration. Winners use frustration to become better at their game. In order to reach your goals, you must work hard physically and mentally. So let's talk about goals. What are goals? Goals are not a hockey puck going into a net. Goals are something that challenge yourself to become a better player. Always set a lot of goals. Once you reach those goals, set more. And be realistic. Don't set goals that are so high that give you disappointment. I always set goals to make myself better. And once I reach them, I go on. So let's discuss some of the goals you can have. You need to think about what a good baseball player does. Setting goals is like climbing a ladder. In this case, the big goal is to become a good ball player. The goals along the way need to be learning to hit, throw, and catch. You'll get frustrated at times doing this because no one can learn all these aspects of the game right away. The key is practicing these over and over again. You set goals to stay on track. There are three very important things to remember when setting goals. Make them difficult, make them specific, and more importantly, make them attainable. You must be able to reach your goals in order to want to move to the next level. As parents and coaches of these youngsters, you can keep them on track and help them be realistic to get good coaching and have good equipment. You want to hit it right up there on the meat where it says Little League? Right the most there. important Little point about playing baseball in the early years, 7 through 10, is that you're learning. You're learning the basics. Learn the fundamentals at every position and try every position. Don't limit yourself to just one. Learn what it takes to pitch, catch, throw, and field. All the basic fundamentals that make a baseball player good. See why a catcher is different from a second baseman. You'll be more rounded player by trying a lot of positions. Coaches have a habit of making the best athlete the pitcher, but most likely he won't be a pitcher when he gets older. In order to learn all about the game, you need to experience every position. When you get older, you can specialize. I once interviewed eight major league pitchers, and only two were pitchers when they were kids. 
I was not always a pitcher as far as that was not the only position I played. I played every position but catcher. And uh, I just tried as many positions as I could because I didn't know what I was going to be at that age. Nobody really knows here. You may be gifted right now as far as being really fast, and you may think the outfield's your position, but don't just narrow it down to one. Try everything. And, and another thing that, that along that line with trying everything and with your coaches, listen to what your coaches have to say because they're out there to help you. And the biggest problem I think young kids make is they rebel or they block off. If someone criticizes you, don't look at it as bad. Look at that as, as what you can work on to improve. And with the loose hand, put it behind the glove. That? Right, because you'll, you'll never forget getting hit with that hand without a glove on. Boom. You'll never forget that. Once it happens, and I don't want that to happen to you. So you take the glove. And take time once you've played every position to start improving at certain positions. Don't be satisfied with where you're at right now. There's always somebody out there trying to take your position and is working harder than you are. If you like controlling the game and are good at understanding the positions and situations, right. you should consider catching. Spending time as a catcher is a good way to be involved in the game. Remember everything we talked about so far. But don't get so serious about the game that you aren't having fun. The most important thing to remember is that you're learning and it should be fun to learn. Don't put so much pressure on yourself that you can't have a good time with your friends. The parents' role has to be much more than just transportation. Parents are still the most important people to kids. Parents must be constant support to kids. Reinforce effort and accomplishments will come. Positive comments last much longer than negative comments. Negative comments cause kids to be tentative and to play to not fail. This sets kids up to fail. Positive comments cause kids to play to win. You can depend on your coach for guidance and your family for support. But go to practice and look at each day with excitement. You have to feel good about what you're doing. Challenge each other. Challenge yourself. Don't be satisfied. Be proud that you have set a goal for yourself. After you have accomplished that goal, celebrate. Be proud of yourself and set a new goal. For example, my goal today is to catch 50 pop-ups. I'm going to go in the backyard, throw the ball up in the air 50 times once I've caught 50 balls, take time to pat myself on the back, but then realize and set new goals. This is a great example. Have something in mind to do every day. Let your parents know what your goal is. And parents, ask your children what their goals are. Parents need to support their children's goal. If you don't accomplish your goal for the day, look at something good you did. Go after that goal tomorrow. Parents, if it's your goal, it may become pressure. If it's your kid's goal, then you're encouraging. This is a family activity. Bottom line is that your child can throw those 50 pop-ups by him or herself, or you can throw them up for them. Be realistic about your skills and abilities. Even though at seven years old, I decided I was going to be a major league pitcher, you've got to have a backup plan. If you don't make the team the first year you try out, don't give up. Ask the coach what you need to do to make the team next year, and then go get some help in learning those skills. I've seen too many kids who don't make the team one time give up, and their career's over. Parents need to be sympathetic to the disappointed kid's situation. Continue to encourage. Introduce your child to another sport. Kids can change directions quickly. Not making the team usually hurts the parent more than the kids over the long term. Keep your children active. If they play three sports before next baseball season, that's great. In fact, John Smoltz was an all-state high school basketball player. When baseball season arrives again, they'll be ready. They will most likely be bigger, stronger, faster, and better coordinated. I, believe it or not, was smaller than anybody here. How tall are you? Or stand up. I was that size for a long time. I got made fun of, called names, all that. But you know what? I was out there on that mound working hard. So the size don't mean anything. It's how you use these body parts. Challenge yourself. Spend time with someone who is better than you in the sport. You'll find out that by doing that, not only you will become better, but so will they. Let me tell you another story. I'm going to take you back to when I was 16 years old. All the years up until that point, I had dominated and done real well against my own age group. I then competed in a tournament that was 20 and under, four years above what I was competing in. There were 30 scouts out there. This was my big chance to prove to them of what I was doing. I was out of state, and I had my opportunity. For three innings, I did real well, proud of myself. I thought things were going great. 
In the fourth inning, I gave up three two-run homers in a row. A very embarrassing moment in my sports career at that point. When I got home, I told my dad I'm going to work harder. Players out there are better than I am. And that I'm not going to use failure as an excuse not to reach my goal. I also realized that playing with better ball players will make you the better ball player in the end. Often that better player is the parent. And again, an opportunity to encourage your child's goals and just as importantly, spend quality time with them. In a perfect world, one that does not have any distractions, becoming a baseball player would be very easy. But since we do not have that luxury, we need to know how to deal with hurdles that might come across our path. Every hurdle that comes across our path can be dealt with and overcome with the support and help of our family and coaches. I know this because it happened to me. Peer pressure, criticism, name calling. They all exist when you're growing up. They all affected me when I was growing up. From seven years age all the way into high school, I dealt with everything. My way with dealing with it is I chose not to do it. I was called every name in the book in high school. I was called mama's boy. I was called little runt on the mound. These things I just didn't let affect me. I chose that sports was going to be my avenue, my outlet, and that that was going to be my main focus. I really think that peer pressure affects a lot of kids and makes them do things they're not willing to do or wanting to do. Parents, use examples of your childhood, how you overcame adversity. Tell your children how important they are and tell them how much you love them. Practice with them and reinforce them. The next hurdle you'll need to conquer is jealousy. Jealousy exists everywhere. As you begin to get better, people are going to see that. Expect some friends to get jealous. They'll start rumors about you. They'll call you names. They'll try to make sure you don't achieve your goals. If you stick to your goals, you'll be able to deal with the jealousy in this world. Being cut from any team is a big hurdle to overcome. As seventh grade basketball coach, I had to cut a young man from the team. Two years later, he tried out for the freshman team. I was also the coach of that team. He not only made the team, but proceeded to go on and play high school basketball. He didn't use failure as an excuse. He used it as a motivation to become a better basketball player. Parents remember it's OK to cry. It's OK to get frustrated. Kids need to get it out of their system. Then it's time to recover. The great athletes recover quickly. Instead of dwelling on your frustrations and disappointments, think about what you did well. Then with your parents, sit down and develop a plan to improve. Maybe plan to go to a camp. Don't forget your goal to be a good baseball player. Practice at home. Play another sport while you wait for next baseball season. Well, I played baseball ever since I was can remember, six, seven years old. And at seven years old, I told everybody I was going to be a Major League Baseball player. And from seven years old all the way to where I'm now, 25, so that's what, 18 years? I've been, been working towards that goal and maintaining it, because it's not over with. Just because I make it doesn't mean that my goals or my, uh, is, all, is all done. I set new goals. I want to maintain that. So I tell you, when seven years old came, I didn't know where I was going as far as positions, but I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do everything I can to make it in the big leagues. And my advice to, to you guys here is that whatever it is, you, you're not probably all going to be big league baseball players, but what if it's high school? What if it's college? What if it's basketball or, or a teacher? Or what? You can do it if you set your mind to it and work hard. These are the first steps you're making out here. Now, we've talked about a lot of things so far, but please listen to me when I talk to you about this next area. Drugs, alcohol, and chewing tobacco. Don't mix. Please avoid them. They will not help your career or better you as a baseball player. Sport gives you an opportunity to accomplish things that you can't get in other areas. Competition, movement, belonging to a team, and achievement. These things help you to feel better about yourself. With all the social pressures and peer pressures and temptation around you every day, you need to be strong mentally to do what's best for you, to avoid things that will hurt both you and your family. Illegal drugs don't make you bigger and stronger and faster. They make you weaker mentally and physically. They make you a person you don't want to be. Smokeless tobacco does not make baseball players great. It takes away from their ability to play well. If you're going to develop habits, develop healthy habits. Don't do anything that's going to take away from your talent. Now, your families can help you with these. Before you start moaning and groaning, I was your age not too long ago. My dad was a big influence in my career. 
He didn't pressure me in any way. All he did was encourage me. There are critical learning periods. We must recognize that there's a time in a kid's life when he or she is ready physically, emotionally, socially, and mentally to learn certain sports. Just because a kid looks ready physically, he or she may not be ready for the competition mentally. Whoa! Parents, you must know this. Watch your kids. You'll know when they're ready. Here's a few guidelines for you to help them with their progress. Get them in a good program, find a good coach, go to practices, and go to games. Practice with them at home and make a commitment to your child's goals. Now, there are a lot of parents that want their kids to be a star. They want them to practice, but a lot of parents don't make the time to support the kid. We need to be realistic about the sacrifices involved. Your kid is practicing instead of hanging up town. You should either attend the practice or go to the games. Hopefully both when possible. Families have to be realistic. What they can and cannot teach their kids in learning to play ball. I'm talking about the relationship between the parent, child, and coach. Parents have to do everything they can for the kid and respect the coach at the same time. Coaches are there to observe behavior as well as refine skills. Parents, you cannot give false promises to your kids. Don't worry, you'll make the team. Kids then do not apply themselves fully. Parents, respect the coach and umpire, and you'll see the results in your children. You need to understand what the coach is doing and why. It's real easy to point the finger, and you don't understand what the coach is actually doing. The parents can teach their kids a lot during this stage. For example, not yelling at the umpire, not acting like a fool, because kids look up to you. What they see you doing, they'll end up doing. There's absolutely no excuse for yelling at this stage. No excuse for parents to yell at umpires or for coaches to yell at kids. Coaches can be firm and positive without yelling. Kids and parents respond to what they see. Coaches and parents need to be careful of body language and tone of voice. Remember, coaches and parents are supposed to be positive influences. Games should be fun and a great family experience. How to practice. Here's some ways I learned how to practice how I discipline myself to become a better ball player. You really have to listen to the coach during practice. You have to take criticism well and decide what kind of criticism it is. Set daily goals to improve yourself. Be open-minded to all the information and take what you can from it. Don't be content unless you are learning. Never stop learning. A couple things I want to talk to you about and then I'll ask you to feel free to ask any questions, but some some things I feel are important at your age group, and hopefully someday you're going to be inspiring baseball players as well. But some things that, that might help you out a little bit. when you're, If you're going to be a pitcher, or if you're going to be a shortstop, or you're going to be a catcher, or any position on the baseball field, you've got to know how to throw the ball properly. And you've got to get the ball to where you want to get it. Shortstop, you've got to get it to first base. Pitcher, you've got to get it to the catcher. And I've got some real quick tips that I think can really help you accomplish these a little bit better. The gripping of the baseball is very important. Now, for you guys that have got a little smaller hands, however you grip it to throw it is fine right now. Don't worry so much about the grip. But if you're trying to become a pitcher, or even the positions I talked about, your basic two-finger grip when you get old enough, and you don't want to squeeze it. I see a lot of kids, they grab that ball and they squeeze it, and they think they can throw it harder by squeezing it. you got to remember that this is an egg, okay? or a live bird. You don't want to kill the bird, but you don't want to let it go. So that's a real important tip on throwing the baseball. You've got to make sure that you have the proper grip and it feels comfortable in your hand. The next most important thing is how do you throw the baseball? Where's your arm? We talk about arm angle. Anybody know? Everybody know what I'm talking about, about arm angle? It's where you release the baseball. Now, you guys are a little bit younger and not developed as much. Some of you may be releasing it here. Some of you even down here. The older you get, the higher this arm should go. We don't want you throwing like this. It's kind of like a 90 degree, so you can throw the ball and follow through. Always have an idea where you're throwing it. It's real easy to pick up a ball and just throw it and play catch and not have an idea. And I bet you if I asked you to line up and play catch for five minutes, you'll be chasing the ball. Big leaguers do it too. So it's real important that if I'm playing catch with this gentleman right here, even though you're Cincinnati Reds, why don't you stand up? If I'm playing catch, I've got to have an idea of where I'm throwing the ball. So my idea right now is right here in the chest area, okay? Because I know if, if I throw it at the chest, the one thing he's got to do is catch the ball or it's going to hurt. So he's got to catch the ball. 
So I always, when I'm always playing catch, I pick out an area on the person and I try to throw it to the chest. All right? So I think that's one thing you should work on just to even play and catch. Concentrate on throwing and catching at the same time in the same area. If you watch me pitching, I have three basic steps. If you get nothing out of anything I've talked about, remember these three things. Step back, you gotta transfer your power. Step back, balance, and follow through. Those are the three basic principles that we talk about when we talk about throwing the baseball. You gotta step back, you gotta create momentum. Step back, balance. I should be able to sit here all day and talk to you like that because that's balance, and then follow through. If those three things you can remember, that's gonna help you get the ball to the ball to where you want it faster, and also at the same time, it's gonna give you a little bit more accuracy. And I watch Little League games a lot and can remember the days that I was playing. The biggest problem, or I should say, the one thing that was not accomplished the most was throwing the ball where you want to throw it. You could feel it all right. Sometimes that throw went wild. Same thing with pitching. The most successful pitchers at your age group all the way up are not the ones that throw the hardest, the ones that throw strikes. And I think those three things are really important. You got to step back, balance, and follow through. You've got to want something so much that it becomes a party. Everybody has a talent, but it's what you do with that talent that counts. If you have a dream, a goal, you've got to have a way to reach it. No one can do the best without a lot of hard work. I hope everybody learned a lot and enjoyed the tape. But most of all, I hope you and your family learned how to achieve goals together. I'd like to thank the North Palm Beach Little League teams and FINA for making this possible. Good luck, everybody. You'll do great. At FINA, we know the best way to design a gasoline is from the inside out. So our Genesis Premium Gasoline was made to keep your intake valves clean, giving you more performance and better gas mileage. Because how a gasoline performs inside your car has a lot to do with how you perform on the outside. Genesis Gasolines. From your friends at FINA, the formula for the future.